Good afternoon, this is Whitney Phillips. The student data privacy team is here. Uh, we are recording this webinar uh, on February 13th. We originally scheduled this webinar on uh, February 6th, and if you all remember, it was a very snowy, blizzardy day, uh, and we were unsure that staff would be able to be here to uh, record the webinar live. Nonetheless, we are here to um, go through a few important agenda items. We have, uh, Jessica will be going over contract alignment. Uh, we'll have a checklist for data managers, a couple uh, new training videos that have uh, been a lot of fun to develop, right, Greg? And uh, we'll be talking about the exciting legislative session uh, and then we will be going over um, some things that we want to focus on that are a little different this year than uh, in previous years. So I will hand it off to Jessica. Okay, so I'm going to talk about contract alignment and the Utah Student Privacy Alliance. So this is a project that I'm working on and is meant to be a tool that will help LEAs and charters um, do their contract alignment in terms of student data privacy. Uh, the USPA, or Utah Student Privacy Alliance, is a part of the International Student Data Privacy Consortium. It's nationwide schools, international vendors, and there are a lot of different tools within that software and website that will help kind of streamline the process for um, data privacy agreements. So to start off the timeline for this project, we have been onboarding a few LEAs and piloting how this will work um, in December and January and also now leading into February, we're developing a training that will be accessed online and we'll also be talking about this at the USET conference. So I think everyone's aware of the burdens on LEAs. This includes signing the agreements, hundreds of contracts per year for student data privacy, negotiating terms if you don't have a lot of resources in your um, LEA, that can be really difficult, and then keeping track of all the free apps when they are sharing PII or collecting that from students. So we've come up with a few solutions with this project. We have created a data privacy agreement for the state of Utah. This has a lot of great exhibits on it um, that we'll go into in a little bit. This also, through the Utah Student Privacy Alliance, creates a community of LEAs helping LEAs sign these agreements and create a registry of the resources. It also allows for more inventory and transparency, and then it has a bit more weight where you can see what has been signed in other states. So the Utah Data Privacy Agreement, or DPA, is following all federal and state requirements. And we do have some specific to Utah, which makes it a contract that will be kind of the base of the requirement. We're working on revising that right now, um, and it will be sent out and available once that is complete. The Exhibit E on this DPA is really exciting. It's a general offer of terms. Basically, when a vendor signs this with an LEA, it allows for other LEAs in the state to subscribe onto the agreement. Uh, say one district signs with an application, we could say MobiMax, then another district could sign this Exhibit E page. All they have to do is sign it online and email it to the MobiMax representative, and now they are subscribing onto the data privacy agreement and don't have to do one of their own. So this is very exciting. It means one contract could be done for an LEA in Utah, and then it doesn't need to be created or negotiated again. Um, so this is very exciting. Through the Utah Student Privacy Alliance, you can also see what has been signed in other states. Um, this is a screenshot of the homepage, and there's a link. You can play around with that and search um, without having a login. We will be allowing more logins and providing that training once it's developed um, at the end of the month. On the national page, and the link is at the top, you can search the database and see what's been signed. And this also doesn't require a login. You can see what's been signed in other states across the U.S., so if you click on search the database, you will have the options to search by state, by district, or by application name. So we've put in Kahoot if you want to see what your likelihood is or what um, the process has looked like trying to get an agreement signed with Kahoot. And from this, you can see through Texas, California, and Massachusetts, they have either not responded um, not signed the agreement or the district has gotten parental consent or vetted it and decided that they're going to use it. 
Um, so the likelihood of getting Kahoot signed would probably be difficult because you can see they haven't signed that with anyone else. So this allows you to kind of see where your time would best be spent um, and also reach out to other people who have successfully contracted. This software also allows for a widget, so it can create a widget to be on an LEA homepage if you'd like to have a registry of all of your digital resources. Here's an example of Cambridge Public Schools. They have this digital resource widget on their homepage. And as you can see, they have a list of all inventory that has been approved for that data privacy agreement and also inventory that's been declined. So teachers or people in the community can go to this website and see what has been approved and declined and have more of that transparency and inventory piece. So next steps, um, we will be promoting this um, at USET. We'll have a poster session and kind of have some more information on that. We also have a list of the vendors who will be attending and have been working through the Utah DPA process with a few of them. And then we'll also provide some vendor recognition. So those that have signed the DPA and are in the Utah Alliance will have a badge saying that they're a part of that and will be able to advertise and incentivize other companies to join and sign on to that DPA in Utah. Okay, thanks, Jessica. Uh, we wanted to talk about the checklist for data managers. This will be on our website uh, and in a video that Greg is about to show you. We have a checklist for data managers. This is a one-pager of data manager responsibilities. Uh, we've been asked uh, a few times by data managers uh, if we could help them know if they are doing what they are supposed to be doing uh, to gauge uh, if they are compliant. And so we wanted to put this together for you, a one-pager that again is on our website in the video and we'll be adding this to our Utah Data Privacy Guidebook as well. We've completed two new videos that are up on YouTube right now. One's the Data Manager 101 video, which kind of covers everything that's in that one pager that Whitney just talked about. And then the other one is a video on COPPA or COPA, however you want to say it. Um, and it just briefly goes over kind of the how, how it applies to education and what you may need to do uh, for those that are under 13 in your schools. Uh, what's next in terms of videos? Uh, we're working on something for what Jessica has been talking about, which is the Utah Student Privacy Alliance. Um, we're, we're working on a video and a course for data managers specifically, but others in the, in the school as well that may be working with this on how to navigate the website and how to do uh, contract alignment and how to upload that to the website. We're currently thinking about doing two other videos as well in the next few months. One is on school resource officers. We have a lot of questions on some of the limits that they are held to in terms of what they can share and who they can share it with, especially with video. Um, surveillance so we're gonna hopefully come out with some direction on that and then a video on limited directory information which is the same thing as directory information but there are some limits in place this is something that a lot of people don't use but you may want to use it so we wanted to inform everyone about that and then some other things that we want to mention uh, in terms of training in-person training opportunities we recently were down in Iron County where we did a data breach training with their administration. So we had the superintendent uh, and a bunch of different admin from within the office as well as a lot of the people in IT. And I think it went really well and it kind of gets everyone on board and helps you develop a data breach response uh, policy, which is or procedure, which is what you are actually required to do as a part of your data governance plan. So uh, we would love to come out and help facilitate that and kind of get everyone on board with that so you know what to include in your data breach response uh, procedures. And then uh, there's always FERPA training for faculty and staff that we're happy to come out and do. But we have developed a lot of online materials that you can use instead of us coming out in person. Um, and one of those is 
a new Google Sites training module that you can use for your annual FERPA training. We recently just did a course um, for relicensure that is housed on USB's website, but I have kind of condensed that and made it a little different um, for a for another Google Sites course that I've given to a few uh, data managers and you're able to duplicate that course and then add or subtract to it, whatever you want and they seem to be pretty enthusiastic about that so if this is something that you're interested in I need to give you access to that Google Sites course and then show you how to duplicate it so that you can change it however you'd like so uh, if you're interested in that you can just email me at greg.cox at schools.utah.gov and I will give you access to that just let me know that that you're specifically asking for um, access to the new Google site for uh, annual training and I will send that to you. Okay, well, uh, now let's talk about the bills on Capitol Hill uh, that may or may not have an impact to data privacy. First, we have uh, HB 120, the Student and School Safety Assessment. It's a large ask of $66 million, the bulk of which would go towards hardening of uh, uh, infrastructures, so that would be uh, kind of new doors or entryways, uh, construction for schools. Also, uh, some support teams that may include mental health professionals. But number three here, uh, USPE will create a tool for LEAs to get insights from behavior and disciplinary data. Uh, we're keeping track of the language here of what it looks like to make sure that we follow federal and state privacy rules. For example, uh, you can disclose information in cases of an emergency, and uh, we wanna make sure that an emergency uh, is well-defined within the schools and that data are not disclosed, you know, for Greg pulling David's hair or something. So uh, we have HB 237, uh, personal electronic device use in public schools. The uh, board is, uh, revising board rule R277495 that is related. This is acceptable use of personal devices that are within the schools, perhaps uh, not on the network, but using uh, personal data. This would require LEAs to provide training to teachers and students in the first 20 days uh, if they are uh, having an allowable um, policy. So you see a few different types of options for policies here. We're unsure whether this will move forward or if the uh, House will recognize that the board rule will satisfy the intent of this bill. Uh, this is the Public uh, Information Information Systems Uniformity Act. This is an ask of $17.2 million, which will help with uh, IT development. It will uh, help modernize existing systems and uh, have minimum standards for data collection. So this is, we call this USIMS here, and uh, this would be a system focused for student data, uh, and then I believe uh, working on teacher and finance data to combine those. And lastly, we wanted to talk about a few uh, focuses for 2019. As the new year has just rolled around, we've been thinking about uh, New Year's re resolutions and things we want to work on. Uh, what Greg meant mentioned with um, the resources we're developing, it's those, those things we've talked about before, data breach um, and uh, talking about FERPA, but we want to have a few more additional focuses. So we're not gonna let go of the basics, but we want a few more focuses for this year. As Jessica mentioned, contract alignment is a big focus for 2019. Our goal is to have uh, 100 Utah data privacy agreements uh, completed by June 30th. And right now, as Jessica mentioned, we're in the pilot stage, but there's been a lot of excitement, both from vendors and LEAs about this project. The other two focuses here are students and parents. We know that there is existing curriculum on digital citizenship, and so we're working with uh, that curriculum department here with CTE to maybe develop some resources that might be helpful for students to learn a little bit more about 
data privacy, and as well as be more transparent with parents so that they are able to have those discussions with their children. Thank you for your patience with having a late webinar. And our next webinar is scheduled for March 6th. We will be having a uh, guest speaker. She'll be talking about disclosures to caseworkers. For example, if uh, the child uh, protection agency comes to your school, what can you disclose? What do you have to disclose? Why are you disclosing it? What are you restricted from disclosing? She will go over all of that information. So thank you for joining us. Have a great day.